All right. That's the overview of what we're looking at here. And a lot of that may have been a bit confusing. Um, but just to start with, I kind of want to set this up with what's going on in the Bible at this point. So this... my marker pad. So this verse is found in Exodus chapter 34 verses 6 and 7. Now Exodus is the second book in the Bible. So if you have a Bible, it's right here at the beginning where all of this is to follow. So we're close to the beginning here. But there's a lot of stuff going on surrounding um, this verse. Now, does anybody know the story of Moses and the Israelites? What do you know about Moses, Grace? Yeah. 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 Um, has have any of you seen the movie The Prince of Egypt? That's a really good movie. I've seen it. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's, it's old. I think it might be older than me. Um, but it's a very good movie, talking about the story of Moses. And Jace was right. So Moses um, was an Israelite who lived in um, Egypt. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, can anyone tell me what's special about the Israelites in the Bible? All right. So the Israelites come from one man. His name's Abraham. And in the Genesis, the first book of the Bible, God calls Abraham out of a foreign country and tells Abraham he's going to make him a great people. And from Abraham, he will make um, a nation that will bless the world. Is what the promise God makes to Abraham in Genesis. So there's a whole lot that goes on in Genesis. Abraham and his wife are really old, way too old to have kids. God does a miracle, and they have one son, which is not a nation. Um, and that son has two sons, which is still not a nation. So God promised to Abraham that his descendants will outnumber the stars, and Abraham only has one son, and then his son only has two sons. So it's a little, um, it seems like it's a little slow to start with, but then... Abraham's grandson, his name's Jacob, and then he has 12 sons. So that's where the nation building really gets off to a great start. But over the time in Genesis, the family grows, and Genesis ends with the Israelites living in Egypt um, because there was a famine. Some other stuff is a really cool story. I would highly recommend reading it in Genesis. Um, so Genesis ends with the Israelites in Egypt. And the Israelites grow into such a great nation from the, the 12 sons that Jacob had, that the Egyptians become scared. Because they're like, these people are growing. We can see that God's blessing them. Soon they're going to outnumber us. They live in our country, and we're, they're going to overthrow us. So the Egyptians take all the Israelites, and they put them in slavery and make them do forced labor. And the Israelites stay in slavery for 400 years, which is a very long time. When you consider that the United States of America is not even been around for 300 years, like 250, I think, almost 250. That's a pretty long time to be in slavery for 400 years. But after those 400 years, God 
um, raises up a man by the name of Moses and calls Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And so this is what happens in Exodus. In the beginning parts of Exodus, we see Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery, like uh, Jace was telling us, how God uses Moses. They part the Red Sea. The Israelites walk through. And then the Israelites are in the desert. So that's where this is picking up here in Exodus. We find the Israelites are camped out at a mountain called Mount Sinai. And they're just chilling there, and they're waiting for God to give them directions. Because God promised to lead them out of Egypt, out of slavery and bondage, and take them to the promised land. So that's what they're sitting here waiting for. Now, the really cool thing about this is this is the start of a covenantal relationship between God and the nation of Israel, all the Israelites. And God promised Abraham that he would use Abraham's descendants to save the world. So that's what we see starting here in Exodus, where God is preparing to begin this covenantal relationship with the Israelites. And later on, throughout the whole Bible, when you get to the New Testament, that's when Jesus comes into the picture. And Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham to bring salvation to the world. So that's way down the line. We're way back at the beginning, where things are just getting started between the Israelites and God. So... We talked about this in the video, just to cover a little bit of history. God brings the Israelites out of Egypt, saves them from slavery. They're in the wilderness. The Israelites are complaining because they're in the wilderness and they don't have food or water. God supplies food and water miraculously. And the Israelites are grateful. And then what God does is he says, I'm going to set up this relationship with you. And to do that, there's got to be rules because God is a just God. And God is righteous, and unfortunately, humans are not. So to do so, God starts by giving Moses the Ten Commandments. Anyone know what the Ten Commandments are? Jace. Mm-hmm. Don't have idols. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I always had to know Savior. You know, this is the reason why I'm not going to be the Savior. I'm going to be the Savior. I'm going to be the Savior. Yeah. Don't accept me as a sexual opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are ten commandments, the ten commandments, and I'm going to read them out to you. Um, the first one is you shall have no other gods before me. The second one is you shall not make for yourself an image in any form in heaven or above the earth or beneath it or in the waters below. Essentially, no, you can't make idols and worship them. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God or don't take the Lord's name in vain. Number four is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Just pretty much don't lie. Um, And number 10, you shall not covet what your neighbor has. So these are the 10 commandments that God first lays out for the Israelites in starting to set this relationship up with them. And now I'm going to do a little drawing, and you'll get to see my amazing artwork. All right, so here's what's going on here. I'm also left-handed, so I'm going to block like everything, and so you won't be able to see it. Because you're you're left-handed. It's your big side here. I am left-handed. So, oh, Elias will not have to hold it. Also, we're going to try the orange marker, because green's not working. Oh, look at that. We'll be able to see. So here we have a beautiful drawing of a mountain. It's not very beautiful, but thank you. So we have this drawing of the mountain. This is Mount Sinai. Well, I'm not going that way. I think that's a hard draw. That's a hard draw. 
Can we call it Mountain S for now? It's called Phi. Like a moon dot. I like it. Phi. Mount Sinai. That's not how you spell it. So this is the mountain we got here. And this is Mount Sinai, and here, all these little dots are all the Israelites camping out here, and there are thousands of them. Because remember, huh? It's extra big dots for extra large tents. That's why everybody lived there. Yeah. Smoke like a fire. Is it a campfire? Grow food? Well, they aren't growing food at this point because they're stuck in the desert. So this is just like a, they just came out of Egypt and they're camping out in the desert at the base of this mountain waiting for God to um, speak to them. So, that looks like a tent. Hey, what? what they eat? They ate manna. Manna. Or you guys are going by this thing? It's little. Manna's kind of weird. Like Nobody like really knows what it looked like. Exactly. I meant it to look like that. So manna was like this almost wafer-like bread substance that they said tasted like honey. And they called it manna. And the word manna in Hebrew literally means, what is it? So what happened is they were hungry in the desert. And one morning they wake up. They find on this ground these little wafer breadish things. And they're like, what is this? And it's food that God supplied for them to eat. And it tasted like honey. It's supposed to be really good. But they literally woke up one day and saw on the ground, and they said, what is this? And that's the name of it, manna. So what they ate was manna. Later on, they said, we're tired of just eating bread, and they complained. So God sent them. Little quails to eat. Duck, quail. The bird of some sort that they were able to eat. So this is how God provided for them. He got manna, bread, and then I'm gonna see if I can do this. Put my artistic skills to the test here. So there's a rock. That looks like tent. Moses hit the rock with his staff. That looks like he's trying. And water flowed from it to supply water. So this is, and this didn't all happen at the same time, but this is the Israelites in the desert, all the dots, because they've been in Egypt for 400 years, so a lot of Israelites now, so thousands upon thousands. They're camping, fire, smoke, at the base of Mount Sinai, and God is providing for them in the form of manna, falling from the sky, quail, also falling from the sky, literally falling from the sky, so they can just pick it up and eat it. They probably cook it over the Wait, fire. Are you saying that I, I could eat that actually? So is there stuff in the sky alive and it hits the ground and die? Or what, we're not I'm pretty sure it's dead when it's on the ground. I'd have we're to. Not, are you like pluck it? I assume they had to do the plucking. It's probably not roasted bird just falling straight from the so sky. I assume they still have to cook it. But yeah, this is how God's providing for them. He's giving them food and in the form of what? manna and quail and providing them water. Moses is eating. Hmm? Like what you I guess they can pick it up and brush that the sand off. Like I'm not really sure. That guy was scared. That guy looks like he's just gonna shoot, shoot the, the bird in the face, and then probably do something about it. Is the tent on what kind of quail it is? It's the bat. Yeah, the bat. My artistic skills quail. are not the best. <laughs> but here's what we've got going on here: the Israelites base of Mount Sinai, God is providing for them in miraculous ways food and water. And they're waiting for God to speak to them. And so what happens is Moses goes up on Mount Sinai and he goes to speak to God. And the Israelites are here waiting for Moses, so we're going to put Moses climbing up the mountain, ignoring the fact that Moses is very compared to the mountain. There goes Moses. He's trucking up the mountain. He's going to speak to God. He's at the top of the mountain. Where's his in the form of a cloud. That looks 
Moses has mad hiking Where skills. Where are these legs? I can't even step in them to just walk. Like, you just see holes. It reminds me of, like, a robot <laughs> trying to walk, where it just has, like, the, the wheels, like, it's just... Like, yep. the shape of life can turn into a ball. Yeah. So Moses, Moses is here like, at the top of this mountain, and he goes up there. Is and he in a coat? Does he what? Is he in a coat? He's probably wearing a tunic. I'm not even going to try to draw a tunic like a on him. By the way... He's a stick man. He's All a stick man. Okay, now that's stick, that stick, 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 stick man holding a dead man. That stick looks like man. a Fortnite gun made for him. We'll ignore the logistics of stick man holding okay. stick. Okay, the rock in stick the water kind of looks like the ground in like Power Six Two and Underline. Yeah. That's true. Death Valley looks like the rock. Yeah, it looks As like. As I said, my like artistic skills are highly lacking. It looks like the scene where he's it. making storm breakers. Yeah, yeah those. Are but those what's going on here is your lights. Him to the base of Mount Sinai. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai and hears from God. That's not Noah. That's not Noah, it's Moses. Uh, oh, well, it's not Moses. He is a guy who is like turning into He's a representing guy. Moses in this situation. We're going to use our imagination because my art skills are not there. So Moses goes up, and that's where we get the Ten Commandments. God speaks to them, and God actually writes out the Ten Commandments on these two tablets of stone. No, actually, hold on. We're not there yet. Moses goes up and gets the Ten Commandments. And then Moses comes back down the mountain and tells the Ten Commandments to the people. And so the people know the Ten Commandments. And what's more, the people, when Moses comes back down with the Ten Commandments, having spoken to God, the people say, yes. This is good. We want to have a relationship with God. We accept this relationship, and we accept the Ten Commandments, and we promise to follow them. Moses says, great. And Moses goes for a trek back up to the mountain to talk to God, and God's giving him more instructions on how to lead the people. Now, this time Moses goes up there, Moses stays up there for 40 days and 40 nights. How? Does he have exactly. Time? Does he have the what issue? No, okay. he doesn't. What? Is he God God sustains he Moses miraculously for 40 days and 40 nights. Like, I need to sleep. In Bible times, people did live longer. Um, I believe Moses lived a little over 100 years. Um, but in Genesis, the oldest man lived 900 something years. So, yeah, they used to live longer in Bible times. So Moses at this point was probably probably in his sixties. My guess. I'd have to do some math. Well, they didn't live to nine hundred anymore. Yeah. He's probably kind of middle aged, all things considered. Um, but he's up there. For, he stays up there for forty days and forty nights. Now we don't know if God fed him up there or if it was just a miracle and God sustained him. For him to be able to stay up. How does he get through the Bible? Because even though there's a giant pizza plate on top of it. So, 40 days and 40 nights is just like he didn't come down during the night and like stay up there when the sun was up. Yeah. A 20, 40, 24 hour period. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he survived. He had a giant pizza for that. It could have lasted for 40 days. Exactly. Who knows? It might. Like we don't know if he ate or not. The Bible doesn't tell us. How is he going to survive with that big, steep looking? It doesn't even look like he has a body. All he has is. This is just an artistic <laughs> representation. I guess maybe. This is not what Mount Sinai no, looks no, behind like. Behind the mountain, there's a little hole in the mountain, so it's like a cave. And mm -hmm. all it looks like, all he looks Could like, be. is a, with a head and a big, skinny, huge, skinny body. Listen, skinny arms huh? and a butt. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good idea. We should have. Uh, Lincoln's right. We should just pause the, the video when it's a video of the mountain. Like a lollipop with like the wrapper pulled down because the wrapper's the arm. Hey, we don't need to critique no, like my artistic arm. skills. All he has is okay, a butt. butt. All he has is a butt. And that's what I'm picturing. Anyways, the point is. Can you actually tell me what that is? Can you find it? 
It looks like he doesn't. He has a flight suit. He has no boots. Eighty. So Lena researched for us, and Moses was eighty years old when this was going on. So Moses stays up here forty days and forty nights, and God gives him more instructions on how to lead the people. And God writes the Ten Commandments on two stone tablets. Lincoln, we're going to find out what happens to these two stone tablets in just a minute. Guys, so, all right, just a reminder of everything that's going on here. Moses, it did not look like this. But this is our reference in the ages of Moses. Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. And he brought them, and they're in the desert, at the base of this mountain. And God is here to talk to the people and establish this relationship. While he's here, God has already provided manna and quail and water for the people. So God is already taking care of his people, making sure they have what they need to survive. Moses has already told the people the Ten Commandments. Just as a reminder, the first, um, the first two commandments was, You shall have no other gods before me. Don't put anything before God. And you shall not make any idols. Was the first two commandments. And the people have already said, we agree. the same thing as having another God, even if it was relationally like following God. It's like your other God. Yeah. It's like video games with your other God. Yeah. Like They're two God very similar things. Like video games with your other God. Or pizza is your other. Or something that you like to eat that you want to eat with your other God. Yeah, so there's a difference between liking something and turning something to an idol. When you turn something into the idol, that means you're prioritizing them first above everything else in your life. That's like when that's you become an idol. That's the only thing you really do is care about is your idol. Yeah. It's like, I think oh. love that drawing you said, and I was supposed to be a complex picture of it, or I think that books about it, and like how everybody um, has something A good indication to know of when you're putting something in front of God is would you rather spend time with God and reading your Bible or would you rather be doing that thing? Good indication. So, what we've got here, Moses is up on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. He's already told the people the Ten Commandments and the people have already agreed to the Ten Commandments. And then in Exodus 32, we got some bad stuff going on. So, it says, When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron, who was Moses' half, you know, Moses' full brother, and was in like second command of the people. They gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what happened. So Moses has been gone 40 days and 40 nights, and the people are like, look, we don't know what happened to him. He went up the mountain. He didn't come down. He fell down. He could have fell down. He could be dead. He He could have abandoned us. He got poked up his foot. Okay, so manna and a quail landed on him. Yeah, or or, or Essentially, they're just saying, we don't know what happened to him. Anything could have happened to him. And so they come to Aaron, the second in command, and they say, hey, make us gods. No, so what happened is the people would go to bed and they would wake up and the manna would be on the ground and they would pick up enough that they needed oh, for the day. Yeah, I think the same thing happened. They would wake up in the morning and it would be there on the ground and they would pick up what they needed for the day. Something like that. I don't know the exact particulars. But anyway, so in this situation... The people are like, we don't know where Moses went. Aaron, make us some gods to follow. Because that's what the people did at the time, is that they would just make idols and worship the idols. But notice what's happening here. God gave the people the Ten Commandments. What are the first two commandments? You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not make idols. Moses leaves, and then the people go, we're going to put an idol before God. Make us an idol. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much that's what exactly what happens right here. Because Aaron yeah, says, "Give me all your gold." Aaron takes the gold, puts it into a fire, and melts it down, and builds this calf out of it, this statue of a baby cow, and the people all worship it. Exactly. They literally watch Aaron make this idol, and then Aaron says, "This is your god." And all the people worship it. So you see what's going on here? First off, you shouldn't worship something you watch somebody make. Because you know it's not a real God. Everyone gets a free golden cow. It was just one big golden cow built from everybody's gold. So this is what's going on. Moses went up the mountain. As soon as Moses is gone, for 40 days and 40 nights, the people break the rules that God has given them. They promise to obey them. All these little dots representing all the people of Israel promised to follow God. And as soon as Moses goes up the mountain, they say, nope, we're not going to follow God anymore. So Moses came down and told all the people the Ten Commandments, and then he went back up. And after he told them, the people are aware of all of this, and Moses is getting the... Because Moses tells the people, and then he goes back up, and he gets the tablets written on them. So the people already know the Ten Commandments, and they break the first two almost immediately. How about our husbands? They're all crowded in the room, which Moses likes, and her mom comes in, they're like, this is so amazing. And then when she leaves, they all riot and stuff like yeah. that. That's exactly what happens. You can see it a lot. It happens. You, sometimes people get rules, and then as soon as the person in charge leaves, they just break the rules. That's not good. And so God sees what the people do, and he says, this is ridiculous. I've brought these people. I saved them from slavery. I've guided them through the wilderness. I've provided all their food and water. I've given them exactly what they need. They know who I am. And I told them not to put any gods before me or make any idols. And the first thing they do is worship the golden baby cow. Yep. So imagine how you would feel if you were God. What would you do in this situation? I would take it as I would come down with a lightning bolt. And I would slash that with a golden baby cow. That's what God says. He's angry, and rightly so. He's furious with these people who he saved, who have forgotten him just like that. In an instant when Moses leaves, they completely forget about God. And God tells Moses, I'm done with these people, and I'm going to destroy them. Because, yeah. he's No, right, not Moses. Yeah, he says, Moses, you're the only one following me. I'm going to build a family from you. Yeah. Exactly. And so God is getting ready to destroy all the people, and then Moses steps in for the people. Do you know like what they worship? I think they worship a god. The like aside from the calf. So in in this day and age, it was normal for the the various cultures to make gods about nature. Um, so you would have like a god of the sun, a god of the moon. And so, hmm? Yeah, exactly like Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology. It's all based off of nature stuff. Well, there was already different cultures worshiping different gods before this happened. Um, so it's just we need to get the people in the room that we're supposed to be worshiping. Yeah. So these are the people that God has chosen to bless the whole world through. These are the people he's chosen to have a relationship with, and they're saying, no, we don't want you. And they reject God, and God's like, okay, that's it. Okay, Time to be destroyed. To so this is what God says to Moses. He says, I have seen these people. They are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so my anger may burn against them and I may destroy them 
then I will make you into a great nation. So we're going to keep Moses alive and make Moses into the great nation. It says, but Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. And Moses talks to God, and he says, Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them. So Moses' brother also worked at the Egyptian Yeah, it's pretty bad. But Moses talks to God, and he says, God, please remember the promise that you've given. And God says, okay, I won't destroy the people this time. So then Moses takes the Ten Commandments and the stone tablets. You want to know what happened to them? Moses goes down the mountain, all the way down to Two the base of the mountain, and he is furious with the people. What does he do? Does he grab he ta- them? Well, he takes the tab- stone tablets and just throws them down and they shatter. He's so upset. What does what? He takes the tab- tablets and he throws them down and they just completely what shatter. So no one the Ten yeah, well, he's already told them. Right. Yeah. So he shatters them. And then... So God, what it, why doesn't God just make them a story like they can believe what, what he's done? Well, God did. They can see God up in the cloud of the mountain, and they can see God through the miraculous things that he's done. All the time that God rescued the people and led them out of slavery in Egypt, he's been performing miracles. When they were going out from Egypt, the whole Egyptian army came to chase after them and kill them all. Wait, and so God splits open the Red Sea. But then and they it, walk shuts, through. it shuts them. So, right. they think that um, Jesus died? Right. No, go ahead. Tell us. Okay. Did they think did they think the different cultures, like what God was doing, did they think the different cultures were doing that? Did they think other cultures' gods would do that? Is that like, what you're asking? So, no. Oh. Not just God. No, I meant do they worship other gods. So do they think that that the um the mana 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 and quail? Do they think that's coming from their gods? Yeah. So the Israelites only worship the one true God, the God who made the heaven and earth and everything in. Yeah. And all the other various cultures are following after idols and false gods. No. <laughs> so Moses comes down. Moses destroys the golden calf. It's kind of weird what happens next. He takes the golden calf and he melts it down and he makes the people drink it. Oh, that drink it. Huh? Drink it. That's your favorite part? Yeah. And then a disease comes among the people and kills a lot of the people because they sinned and they messed up. So then we're getting close to the verse we have here. After all this happens, the idol and everything, the people rejected God, Moses goes back up the mountain. Yeah, Megan? Wouldn't they die right when they drink it to melt it in the It doesn't really say. So what it says is he took the calf the people had made, burned it in the fire, then he ground it into powder, powder, scattered it in the water, and made the Israelites drink it. So they may have gotten sick from drinking it. You don't really know. Yeah, not quite. But that's the thing. It wasn't a god. It was yeah. just literally this statue that people made, and they said, this is a god. It's a holy cow. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was just, they literally watched Aaron make the cow, and then they said, let's worship it. It's ridiculous. Wait, how did God make them? He gave them life. Make them do what? Drink the bowl. Moses made them drink it. Moses said, you're drinking this. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly why, but that's what the Bible says. Anyway, after all this golden calf debacle happens, Moses goes back up the mountain. And then God gives him tablets again. God writes on the tablets again. He says, here are the Ten Commandments that you can give to the people. And those Ten Commandments actually get put into the Ark of the Covenant. And they live in the Ark of the Covenant, which is made later. 
But this is where we're picking off here. So this, just to recap what's happened, God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery, gave them the Ten Commandments. The people completely disobeyed, completely rejected God, made the golden calf. All that went down. And now Moses is going back up Mount Sinai. And God says, I'm going to reveal myself to you. And this is where we get this verse right here. This is God talking to Moses. These are words straight from God's mouth as he talks to Moses. And this verse is the most quoted verse in the Bible. It's used again and again to describe God. And so like we talked to, like I talked about in the video, which he did sound like Mr. Beast. I never thought I about that before, but he did. That's kind of like, He's actually, this, so all of these videos is from... Um, uh, something called the Bible Project. It's a really cool um, online thing where people, Bible scholars, have done research and they've made videos. It's a really cool research. research I can't tell. Resource, if you want to dig deeper. So, this is what he says. The Lord, the Lord God. The version in the video said Yahweh, which is the name of God. It's actually pretty interesting. Hebrew the language of the Israelites, which the Bible was originally written in, the Old Testament at least, doesn't use vowels. So when you translate it to English, it's the letters. Let me see if I can get this right. These are the letters. I think those are the letters when you translate it to English. And you can't pronounce it in English. That's what it looks like because Hebrew doesn't use vowels. So we take that and we turn it in, we add vowels because English has to have vowels. And it becomes Yahweh when we add in the vowels. So this is what God is saying. He's saying Yahweh or the Lord, the Lord God. And then he's describing himself to Moses. And so these are the words we have to describe him. God is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Iniquity and transgressions are just other words for sin right there. So, these are what we're going to be looking at as throughout the week. We're going to be looking at these five parts, and we're going to get into a little bit of this part down here. Because this first part half here sounds really nice. You know, it says God is compassionate and gracious. Those are pretty great attributes to have. It says he's slow to anger. He doesn't get mad qu quickly. That's great. He's abounding in loving kindness. Sounds great, right? He's abounding in loving kindness for thousands. It's not just like one or two people who he loves. It's thousands of people. Or in this case. Yeah. And what, what do you mean in this case? Well, yeah, he did get angry at all the Israelites. Yeah, Megan? Can I go back in? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you said that he went up and down the mountain before and back up and then down the mountain again. Mm -hmm. How long did it take him to, like, climb the board or whatever he does? To, to climb the mountain? Yeah. Not really sure. I mean, he's just sure. walking up the mountain. Is it 40 days and 40 nights? Is that like his first trip up there? 40 days and 40 nights? Mm -hmm. How long was the second one? Like three, 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 um... Sure. It doesn't tell us how long he stayed up for the second time, but it wasn't as long. So on the second time, he's probably just coming up and talking to him and then going back down. So it's not the whole 40 days and 40 nights. So God can't like go down there and just like slap someone in the face and say, That's an interesting question. So what happens before all this happens? is God wants to show up to all the people. Because in the beginning, when the Israelites come to the base of Mount Sinai, God's been talking to Moses to lead them out of Egypt, and now they're all here at the base of this mountain, the mountain of God. And plus, God, mm -hmm. God never said for him to go and smack him in the mouth or once. When they get to the base of the mountain, God says, tells Moses, like, get the people ready. I'm going to appear to them. And so all the elders of Israel and all the people of Israel show up at the 
base of the mountain. And they're all there waiting for God to reveal himself. And God comes down the, begins to come down the mountain. And it says, let me see if I can find the exact part. It is really interesting what happens. So God told Moses to get the people ready because the Lord's going to come down from Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And they get ready for the Lord to come down. And it says, God descends from the top of Mount Sinai and called all the people to him. But what happens here is the people get scared. They see God descending in the mountain in all of God's glory. And it's difficult to describe what the glory of God looks like. But it's so much, even more than that. When an angel appears to anyone in the Bible, the first thing the angel says is, do not be terrified. So angels already scare people. Yeah. We'll get to that in just a minute. We don't, there are different descriptions of them in the Bible. No, angels do not look like cupids on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. There are a couple different descriptions of angels in the Bible. So we don't know exactly what they look like, but we do know when they appear to people, they say, do not be terrified, it's okay. So we know that either them suddenly appearing or their appearance can scare people. So God's coming down from the mountain, and the people get terrified. And they tell Moses, we don't want to see God because we think if we see God, we're going to die. That's not what's going to happen. But they tell Moses, we don't want to see God. We don't want to have this relationship with God because they just get scared. So they tell Moses, you talk to God for us, and we'll obey whatever you say. So God already offered to the people. He wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the people. And the people said, no, that's too scary for us. We're just going to have Moses. Golden baby cow comes with some ring. Yeah. And like you said, uh, Lincoln, um, right before Moses, or God tells this verse to Moses, Moses asks to, if, God, to, if he can see him. And God says, I'll show you part of me, but you cannot see my face because you can't look on it and live. It's pretty crazy stuff. It's like huh? We don't really know how that's going to work in heaven. Um, because one thing is, the reason we can't look face to face with God now the reason Moses wasn't allowed to look face to face with God is because Moses is a sinful man and God is holy and perfect Wait, so why does God not want them to see I'll read you I'll read you the exact verse so here's what it says um let me see if I can find it. So, on this topic, Moses says to God, Now show me your glory. And God says, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. And then he says, But you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. So what happens is God puts... Um, All right, where's the thing? Well, the thing is about God. We don't know exactly what he'll look like, but we do know that Moses asks to see God. God says, yes, but you can't see my face. So what happens is God kind of hides Moses in this cleft in a rock. And it's, it's kind of weird. We don't know exactly what it looked like, but it says that... Um, 
God says to Moses, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. So all of God's glory passes in front of Moses and God kind of covers Moses. So I guess, yeah, it's kind of, it's difficult to explain. I mean, I don't even know how really to explain it. I think it's difficult for our minds to think about it. But God like covers up Moses so that way he's not fully exposed to God's glory because if it was too much, Moses would die. Kind of like that. It's again, it's kind of difficult for us to grasp. Too much of a good thing. Maybe you can put one or two wrinkles on his face. Hmm? Plot armor? <laughs> well, not quite. <laughs> huh? Have plot armor? What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus does escape from a few situations, but he does die. So like, and then God angels, raises him from the dead. Yeah. So angels are different from humans. Angels are already immortal beings. And angels... Um, are they perfect? No. Because only God is perfect. Only God is perfect. Yes, I'm... throwing some deep questions at me. I don't know all, all this theological stuff. Hey, is this possible? Yeah, but yeah, that's right. Is this possible? Do we not become angels because we have freedom and God gave us freedom and so we go into heaven and the angels are just sent down to help us. So they're just like forms? So the Bible tells us we don't know everything about angels, but what we do know is that God created kind of so God created the angels. We don't know when he created them, but at some point, God created the angels. Then one of the angels decided to, he wanted to be like God. And, and then that he... Into Satan. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, he was yeah. Satan. It was like he was yelling. He was, yeah. he was uh, it shall not come. So angels are not perfect because so Satan perfect. commits the first sin. So, oh, I don't know exactly. The Bible doesn't tell us all that much about angels and humans. Yeah, we'll know everything when we get to heaven and we can ask God all our questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gabrielle, you got any thoughts about all this? It is difficult, I think, for because angels are part of the spiritual realm. And it's difficult, since we don't live in the spiritual realm, I think it's difficult for us to fully comprehend what the spiritual realm means. Which is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's picking I think it's on. It is on, so hopefully it's picking up audio for whoever watches this video in the future. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. The God says, God tells Moses that if you see my face, you will die. How does what? Cairo? Oh, yeah. I don't really know what's going to happen with that. I didn't have phones then. I don't know. Mm, no. Yeah. Yeah. Since Jesus was fully God, 
and fully man, since he was fully human, you could look at Jesus and be fine. Otherwise, when Jesus came, there would have been a lot of people dying. All right. So we have only have 15 minutes left. I think we've covered a lot of different topics. We've had some nice artwork. Does anybody have more questions? I know we've... I take a picture of God. Oh, no, maybe you, maybe you show it to you guys and it's like, all it's Jesus. Like, we don't know if that's even that possible. Like, hmm? <laughs> we don't know. We, what art college did I take? I went to a very prestigious online art school. I am very proficient in Stickman, and that's about it. All right. So what we're going to do tomorrow night and the next couple nights is we're going to be looking at these five attributes that I've underlined. Compassion, graciousness, patience, slow to anger, loving kindness, and forgiveness. By the way, can you go can you go get yourself some drawing lessons? Because that looks like some that looks like Pizza Hut. And that guy looks like a, a guy with just a head, uh, the world's skinniest body and the skinniest and arms, chill. and all he has is a butt chill. at the at the bottom. And with Pizza Hut. I may be able to up my art skills a, a little bit. We'll see teacher. what I can do. And a hmm? non-logical yeah. physical piece. Thank you, Lincoln. Thank you for the affirmation. I appreciate it. Everybody needs an affirmation in their life. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> really? All right. So... What did God do before he created the earth? I don't really know. So all the Bible tells us in the very beginning, the start of Genesis, in the very first verse, this is what it says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how our world starts. So some of the things about God, and that this gets kind of deep, it gets into philosophy and theology, is that in order for God to be self-sufficient and self-sustaining, God must be omniscient, which means he's all-knowing, which means he knows everything that has happened and everything that will ever happen. He is omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful which means God can do anything. And he's omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at the same time. God was never formed. See, this is something that's difficult to grasp because humans are creatures of time. We live in time. You have, let me put this up here, you have a time when you're born and you have a time when you die. And that's all you know. In history... It's like, a, it's like an infinite amount of time on a graph. Yeah. Where it doesn't have any start or really any end. So, well, it does have a start and an end. The God, the God does or the graph? No, the graph does. So this is the graph of time. No, but I mean, like, I mean like in math class, when you're like, like, why, why could it in math class mm -hmm. that doesn't have a like start and finish? Yeah. But I get it, though. You, all you know is you're born, you die. And that's so that's, you know, that's how we time. think of things. Wait, so... Like there's... So Mother Nature did everything? No. No. So Mother Nature is He's not a lady that thinks she has superpowers. And so does them. She has the best clothing. Hold on, dude. So Mother Nature No. Mother Nature is a myth. Yes, I told you. So some people call Mother Nature just everything in creation. It's nature. Some people just call it nature. We shouldn't call it God's wife because God doesn't have a wife. But real quick, back to the... Huh? 
Okay, that's getting real. So, real quick, before I forget this point, time is a line that has a start. Hold on, guys. Space, please. Real quick. Time has a start, and time has an end. We humans think in time. God lives completely outside of time. I feel like time. Which is this sounds really cool because I feel like deep. you're. The, why does this have something so much to do with Flash? Because you're starting to talk a little bit more about Flash and and, and I haven't about mentioned the Flash Wars at all. And in like time and what you're drawing about it, it's like so. It's so much like it's a big imagination. Yeah, it's it like the skateboard. He's talking about the skateboard. So. God, when God creates the heaven and the earth, time begins. And there will be a time, and time will end, and God is completely outside of that. I'm gonna have to I feel like God created the Big Bang to uh, a template to work on, and then God decides to go and just add it on to the So all we know about how God created the word is that it says, literally it says, God created the heavens and the earth. And God spoke and said, let there be light. There are different theories. God has to have somewhere to be doing this different Why? Because I don't think... It's, it's hard to grasp. It is hard to grasp. This is like a, a philo big philosophical concept that people so talk about. But like if, I'm just going to say, if something... Like, if something made... I'm not saying anything made. Mm -hmm. But like, if something made him, then how did that... Exactly. Maybe, maybe, That's the thing. Maybe life is. If something is created, something has to be a creator. Like we see that. If you bake it's a like cake. First, it's a yeah, yeah kind of like that. Like, like if you make a cake or if you see a cake, you don't just say that cake came into being. Somebody <laughs> made that cake. There's a baker who baked the cake. Yeah, but still made it. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. When you think about it, everything created have to ha has to have had a creator, which means there has to be somebody to start it who was not created. But a typical timeline. Timeline. Like, you see, that's another flash word. I'm getting so mixed up with flash and the Bible, mixed with like speed force stuff and logical, physical. Too, huh? we'll talk about all right, but, let's um, let Megan, so hold, on, hold on, just let Megan ask her question. But the thing in the Bible at the beginning, um, where oh, it usually talks about God made the heavens and then God made the earth, people, that's supposed to be where they start, but that's where people start thinking, and, you know, that's like as far as people go back to what they know. Mm -hmm. They're always going to want to know, but how did God come here? Was God, yeah. was God doing it for the earth? How long has he been No. What if in heaven you become a superhero? We don't know exactly what happens to us in heaven, but one thing we do know is God did not have a creator because there has to have been something that created everything. And that something's God. All right, we got a few more minutes. Perhaps. Elias, what you got? Well, human, human, if you have a dog, it's not like that. Maybe you just put it in the crate and feed it. So what you're saying is that it was Jesus. So the dog had to have to be the cold, <laughs> the child, so it has to be a child. So it's like, unless he made it, too. All right. We're winding down on time. Cover some big topics. Is there anything? Big butts. Any confusion that I can help clarify or any other questions we got? Well, what's your question? Let's, let's try to. Oh, you don't remember? Okay. I was like, is something that, like, no one can really answer except for Christians. I mean, there are some questions like that. Um, so I recently got into watching sports when I came in. Uh, when I got into college, um, the Falcons is my NFL team, obviously. It's a very sad time for me. Yeah. Um, my dad went to Georgia Tech, 
So, oh yeah, their football has not been good though. <laughs> so again, it's difficult for me. Yeah, I don't like Georgia, but at least they have a good football team. <laughs> All right, final <laughs> questions before we close out. Tomorrow night, if you're able to come, which I really hope you are, we're going to be talking about God's compassion and God's graciousness. No, she can go ahead and come. Yeah, anybody that hasn't signed up, still good to come. Um, absolutely, if you have friends, invite them. There are fireworks happening later tonight, only tonight, not any other nights. So don't promise fireworks for tomorrow night because we won't have any. Yeah. No, Lincoln. Where do you live? Okay. I got you. Well, it was wonderful to have both of you. I'm glad I met you. We're probably going to be coming back, though, because we have to see our grandparents. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I encourage you to look into this on your own, then it's really cool. Oh, the video? Yeah. We can find ways to get you the videos if you're interested in the rest of it. I think. I don't know what will happen to those. I don't know how to gain access to them. But real quick, before we end, guys, the whole point of this base camp is to dive deeper into the Bible because the Bible is God's word and it tells us everything that we, well, it's the greatest source on everything we know about God. And when we as people are trying to live better lives, we have to look to God as our example. Mm, no. Oh, God, the boys in heaven, they're going to probably be touched on these huge vibrations when they get close to heaven. And they're like the so that's a, <laughs> that's a big question there. Because if all the gods are real, then yeah. Then they're going to be partying. But they aren't them. all real. There is only one God that is real. Golden. But like you said, the golden thing. cow, no. two point cow. This is no. a piece of that God. Uh, I get it. No. More deep That's questions. Ooh. So that brings up a large topic called free will. When God created us, God created, if you look in the Bible, He can. But he doesn't want to. It's kind of confusing. But if you look in Genesis, God creates the first two people, Adam and Eve. They're placed in a garden, and everything is perfect. There's nothing bad, huh? They're placed in a garden. They're like, they're part of it. So they're placed in the garden. Now, when God, the creator, creates them, he can create them as perfect beings and make it so they always love him. Which... Yeah. That's pretty so wrong. exactly it makes them as robots <laughs> and they're they have no choice but god didn't want them he wanted people to be able to choose to love them love him so he creates people with free will and in the garden he puts a tree the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and god says to adam and eve i've created you i love you god walks with them and God has the tree there, and he gives them one rule. He says, don't eat from this tree. If the tree wasn't there, Adam and Eve would have no choice but to love God. Okay, but, but by having the tree there, God gives Adam and Eve the choice to choose to love God or choose to disobey God. And so that's what we have as humans. That's why we aren't robotic that's beings. That's the perfect opportunity. Like, big 
Oh, he sh sh Snake he yeah. made Satan like like him again? No, Snake has power. Now he's power. Satan chose to disobey God. So and he chose like, so he can like, so he's jealous. Whenever he wants. He's mm -hmm. jealous. So he can just kill Satan whenever he wants. Yes. Yes. We're unfortunately we don't have time. I encourage you to, um, yeah, research. Um, if any of you want to have my phone number to ask me questions, I'd love to. Since like both of you aren't going to be here for the rest of the nights, if you want my number to ask questions later, your grandfather knows a lot about all this stuff. If you want to ask him, but I'm more than willing to continue the conversation. These are big questions you're asking. They're very important questions. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of resources out there. The biggest resource is the Bible. That's why I recommend you. All right. Real quick, everybody else is done, so unfortunately we're going to have to be done. I'm going to pray over us real quick, um, and then we'll get out of here. So please bow your heads. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you for each and every one of these guys and girls in this room, Lord. I thank you that they were able to be here. I thank you for the conversation we've been able to have, God. And Lord, I just ask that you will help um, all these questions that have been asked and answered, Lord. That they're still any questions lingering in the minds of everyone here that they'd be able to seek and find, Lord. In the Bible, you tell us to knock on the door and it will be open and seek and we will find. And so we know, Lord, that when we seek after you and when we seek to find answers about you, Lord, that you will reveal themselves, yourself to us. So, Lord, I just ask that you will bless each and every one of these students, Lord. You will protect them as they go about their week and that you will be with them. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, guys. So this was a great the time. Bible ended, or is there just going to be like a new sequel, Bible 2.0? Nope. The oh, Bible Jesus. is done, but yeah. God is not done but the Bible, speaking to people. I'm trying to get it all together. The Bible? Do what? It's like a secret. When, when Jesus returns, could it technically be added on to it? So when Jesus returns, there won't be any more need for the Bible. Like, well, when he comes back, he's not going to get everyone to go back up. Everyone who has accepted him as their Lord and Savior will go I, with I get, him. I'm trying to get it with the Bible. Like, the Bible is like, you know how, like you said, the the humans, we live in time. We live in time. Uh, so, like, we live in time. So all we know is we live, we're born. We have a big, big, nice, big, fat life. We die. Then, Not quite. Well, heaven, yeah. And the Bible is a secret-looking, uh, is like a, like a. The no, Bible like a, reveals like, to us God's nature and what like He has done throughout image. history, so we can learn more about Him. He's like the secret image of God. You know, like like a like we learn about Him, but it's also like a a little like a, like a little bit of some uh, it, ta it talks to you about. So the Bible tells us about God's nature so we can learn more about him. And I think all of your parents are waiting outside. Whenever Jesus does come back, I hope everybody who looks up to him, can you give the Jewish people a second chance to explain Jesus? Yes. So the Bible tells talks about that in Revelation. Because I have yeah. a couple friends who are Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Does anybody, especially you two, since you won't be here, do you want my phone number or are you good? Okay. I don't, I'm not trying to like force my number on anybody, but if you want to ask me questions, I would love to answer questions. If you're good, you're good. That's fine with me. Probably how long did it take you just to learn how to make that I figured that out on the fly. Okay. All right. Yeah, two minutes. All right. I'll get over the stupid images. Does everybody else come be here tomorrow? Okay. Oh, so I'm practicing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow night.